my friends, welcome back to Project Firebird. This is episode three and we're gonna tackle two quick and easy fixes for some of the issues that uh, are plaguing my beautiful Firebird. The first one, as I mentioned, is the clutch. Uh, I was driving it home from the gym and the clutch pedal just went snap and then basically was just flopping back and forth um, without any doing anything at all. For a second, I was terrified that uh, I'd completely busted the clutch or something like that. Turned out it is the simplest and most ridiculous breakdown in history. The clutch pedal is attached to the clutch uh, by a little bolt. And the only thing attaching them is a tiny little plastic grommet. After 30 years, those plastic grommets get a little old and brittle and this one snapped. And as soon as it snapped, it meant that the, the little uh, socket going into the little hole there was no longer secure and it just popped off. This is the offending piece of plastic here. Can you believe that? I was left stranded by the side of the road because of a stupid piece of plastic like that. Uh, fortunately, Pet Boys had a replacement set. Basically, this is the pedal and shift linkage bushing kit. American cars are so similar, they use so many of the same parts. Basically, for, for five bucks, you buy a set that includes like one of everything that you might need. Open. All right, taking me a little time. Oh, I'm dropping them all over the floor. It's the old and broken one. This is the brand new one. And so all I need to do is duck underneath the dash and um, put the clutch pedal uh, back connected to the clutch lever. Make sure this little thing slots into the hole and then we should be good to go. Let's give it a try. So I actually cheated. This is the panel that goes underneath there. You need to remove that. Should be a bolt here, screw there. Slots right out. The next issue that we have is accessibility. How the hell do you get a six foot 180 guy underneath a tiny little dashboard like that? Well, one of the channels I follow, and I'll put a link down there, is something called Chrono Yoga. It's run by an awesome person called Brittany. She teaches yoga. I actually do yoga classes with her. And so the fact that I'm able to do this is entirely due to her. I will see you in about two minutes. A few moments later. Oh. Ah. Uh. Turns out it is not as simple as I thought. So the replacement part I bought from Pet Boys doesn't work. It looks almost identical except there is a tiny little lip in there that clips on and stops the the handle popping off the pedal and because it doesn't have it you know I put it on it would fit perfectly it would click in place and then as soon as I depress the pedal so I have to special order one online I'll put a link down below uh, but that's gonna be at least three days before it gets here so bollocks <laughs> That's me saying passing of three days has occurred. I filmed that video on Saturday. It's actually now Wednesday evening. I've come home from work, but look, look! I got a package from Hawks Third Generation. They are based down in South Carolina. Great place to get third generation parts for your Firebird Camaro. And they have supplied what should be the correct bits to fix my clutch pedal. I'm not gonna lie, these look super weird. These are very different to, uh, to what we had before. But um, we will see. I'm gonna nip underneath 
the dashboard the dashboard and see if I can uh, fix this up stay tuned so here we go underneath I go once again you know what this was actually not that smart decision to do in the evening because I can't really see anything 12 seconds later not even close this thing doesn't even come close to fitting so Militant Ginger. I'm back. Uh, it's now about three days after my last video, which is about three days from when I started this, when I said I'm going to fix two very quick and simple things on this firebird. Did not turn out that way, did it? So, as you're aware, my problem is um, a very small piece of plastic snapped on the clutch pedal. And what happens is you have the clutch itself, the clutch lever here, which is what has a little hook at the end, and the clutch pedal slots in there and then when you push the clutch pedal it pulls the lever back and forth uh, a tiny piece of plastic attaches those and it snapped and um, I bought a replacement and it didn't work and I ordered a replacement off Amazon and it wasn't the right one and I actually went to General Motors and I ordered a retainer clip um, hoping that that would do the trick it hasn't arrived yet but I lost patience so I went to AutoZone and I bought, good old Dorman, um, some push nuts in assorted sizes and an e-clip in assorted sizes. What I'm hoping is that one of these uh, will actually do the job if I put it over the tip of the little knob. It will retain it and keep the clutch pedal on there. So I'm going to disappear under this dashboard once a bloody again and see if I can get this done. Wish me luck. So I don't know if you can actually see what I'm trying to do, but this is a clutch pedal and you can actually see here, that is the bit that I need to attach this little thing to and somehow fit a retaining bolt over the top of it. So let's see how it works. So I'm still trying this. Uh, it's so freaking awkward. I, my, I can't quite get my fingers in there because my hand's too thick. So what I've got, I'm gonna try and hook it on there with these pliers and see if that works. Wish me luck. A few moments later. So I'm still at it. I'm still at it. Okay, so this is the correct size retaining bolt. I don't know if you can see this, but what it has is this little sort of aperture to it which means it will click on and then it won't be able to come off again. The problem is it's so difficult to actually get this thing on top of there and then have the pressure to be able to push it in so it clicks into place. I've MacGyvered it. I've got here 12 millimeter spanner and I've sellotaped the retainer bolt to the top of it. So I should be able to just hook it on and then use the pressure of this to make it click into place. I don't know if this is gonna work. Let's give it a try. 12 seconds later. Okay, that's not working. I have a new, new plan. What I have here, also from Dorma, are uh, some tiny, what's called retainer clips. These, in theory, I want to go into place. Who knows if it'll work or not. Let me first of all see if I can find one the correct size. Got a feeling this little jobby here will do it. Case of getting under there and going click and it should stay in place. Let's see if it works. Oh my god, it worked. I, like, it took two seconds. I was like, click, I'm done. But this is the moment of truth. Let's see if the pedal actually works. 
I only went and bloody did it. Oh, what a nightmare. And you probably saw when I was uh, doing those pedals. There's all sorts of bits of wire and electronics hanging down. I have to tidy all of those up now, but okay. Word for the wise, note for the future. If your little plastic bushing breaks on your clutch pedal, you want to get one of these retainer clips and click. Easy as breakfast. Two second job. It could have been a two second job and it took me a bloody week. <sighs> well, while we're on the subject, uh, there is the second quick and, e uh, quick and easy job I had to do. The, um, uh, you'll probably remember the turn signals. Okay, so job number two is to try and fix the turn signals. Now, um, as I said, the problem with the turn signals is one of them works, click, 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 the other one just stays on all the time. Uh, if the turn signal doesn't come on at all, that's probably a bulb. Um, but if it goes on and it just doesn't flash, I think they call them the flashers, that is something called a relay. A couple of bucks uh, from Parts Geek, I ordered this. And this should basically be just a case of swapping it in and out. And funnily enough, the relay is actually underneath the dashboard. So this should, in theory, be a two second job. But if you'll remember, in theory, fixing the clutch pedal should have been a two second job. So uh, let's see how it goes. Okay. So underneath the dashboard, you've got all these wonderful bits of electronics and the relay is somewhere under here. In fact, I think I might even be able to see it. If I undo that, reach in here. There we go. There we go. It was clipped in underneath there. So I'm gonna swap it out and hope it's the right one. Okay, as you can see, I swapped the new one in. Now it's a question of seeing whether the turn signals work or not. Stay tuned. Success! So that really was a two second job. Uh, now what I'm gonna do is put the clip back on it and then hide it back under the dash. So here we go. This is the correct flasher. This is a little clip that goes on. And it should mean when I put the flasher back in there, it will clip neatly under the dashboard. Nice. Ah. See how it works. Now the final thing I ought to do is clear up all of these wires and things which all came loose. Okay, so now the question is, after all that messing about, does the car actually start? It's time. Now, does the clutch work? It's going. It's going. Oh, look at him go! This bit's so cool! So, it's taken me exactly one week. I started filming this last Saturday, today is this Saturday, but I have done it. I have fixed those two problems with my car. So, she's back on the road, she's back driving, she's back changing gears, uh, and the turn signals work. If this has taught me anything, it is that there is no such thing as a quick and simple job when you're talking about cars, especially General Motors cars. Um, I have owned Fords, and I have owned uh, GM cars, and GM cars just, it's always something like this. I mean, I love my Firebirds, but I mean, I used to own a Cadillac Eldorado, and it's funny, it's like the last four inches of either side of the car, they've got this beautiful sheet steel, and then suddenly it's four inches of plastic. And like, who in their right mind would do that? Same thing with this car. One of the jobs I did last year was uh, change the, um, the door handle, and I was trying to unscrew these screws and thing, and I couldn't, and I couldn't figure out why not. It's because they're fake. Like, who in their right mind would print fake screws? It's just ridiculous. And, and this thing, it was just the icing on the cake. So, tiny stupid piece of plastic snapped and then I couldn't change gear. So now, thanks to that retainer bolt, which is literally two cents from AutoZone, the car's fixed. But that is two jobs off my list. Uh, she's back on the road, so things are good. Uh, 
I will catch up with you next month when we move on to something slightly more challenging. Although this was very, very challenging. Thanks very much. See you soon.